Good afternoon. In this video, I want to deal with the video just put by Gene Kim uh, entitled, Are You Deceived by Fake Dispensationalists? This is just put out February 5th. Now, what Gene Kim is saying is absolutely correct about the church age beginning. He actually starts at the church in Acts chapter 2. But uh, you'll see the where he puts in, sneaks in, a false issue. For one thing, these guys, the Buckman guys, all reject the book of Hebrews and James who written the first century Jews. When you listen to this video, he'll talk about the fact of the transition of going from Jews to Gentiles, right up to Acts 19. Their big thing is, oh, see us through the dispersed tribes of Israel. You know, that it's very clear James can't be written to first century Christians. Well, the first century Christians were early with Jews. They were dispersed. Aquila and Basuila were uh, uh, kicked out of Rome. So, and then Hebrews, the same thing. So first, Hebrews and James were written to first century saved Jews. And uh, that's the, uh, uh, or to get Jews saved. Well, they reject that. Oh, it's not written to the early church. You know, it's not written to the church. So Hebrews, they reject the idea of Hebrews and James being written to the church. Christian uh, 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 books, and when in fact they are Christian books, the first early church was Jewish. Second thing is you're going to see here, he goes to Acts 15, and he wants to say this argument there is about the issue of faith versus, faith versus works. There's never over works. Works can never save you in any dispensation. What this was an argument about is going back to Judaism. This is back to the book of Galatians, the same thing, going back, these are saved Jews. Who didn't want to leave Judaism? This is where these guys would throw you off course. This is uh, this is uh, 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 Gene Kim. This is uh, uh, this is Peter Ruckman. This is uh, Robert Breaker, uh, Brian Denga. Brian Denga, really, on one of his last video, said that the apostles won't say. <laughs> so that's where you get with these guys. But uh, you know, a uh, uh, bunch of these guys, uh, John Davis, all these guys preaching this faith work system, the Old Testament. So we say here, go back here. This is about, no, most of what he says is correct. But he's going to tell you here that Acts 15 was about a faith works. No, it was about going back to Judaism. The law was supposed to lead them to Christ. It was never something to get anybody saved. He goes here in uh, Acts 15, 15.5. Uh, 15, and there were, but there were, <clears throat> there arose of a certain of the sect of the Pharisees which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. That's their walk. That was the issue of Galatians. They wanted to go back to the law. They wanted to go back to Judaism. They couldn't break away from Judaism. Remember the biggest problem that these guys had? Peter had that problem. Barnabas had that problem. Paul had that problem. Breaking away from Judaism. That's where the temple eventually had to get destroyed in uh, AD 70. And the apostles and elders came together for, to consider the matter. And when there had been much disputing, Paul, uh, Peter rose up and said unto the men and brethren, you know that a good while uh, ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. By the way, uh, go to, Genesis, go to uh, Acts chapter 10 of Cornelius. You see him saying a sinner's prayer? No. <laughs> he, gets saved. he gets saved while he's believing. He doesn't say one thing. He gets saved while he's believing. No sin is prayer, people. In Acts chapter 10. No confession with thy mouth. He's speaking tongues, but he's not confessing with thy mouth. He gets saved uh, uh, as soon as he believes. Uh, and God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. Now remember, this is that they don't understand the, uh, what's it, the, the church is being developed. The body of Christ, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. So, what well, he's saying there, put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. That was happening to Jews. They were getting their hearts purified by faith. Now, Gentiles were getting their hearts purified by faith. Now, therefore, why tempt you, God, to put a yoke? That's what the law was a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear. So no one was getting saved by the law. <laughs> These people, faith works. They have a faith work system. No one gets saved by the law. But we believe that through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. In other words, all these things that the, uh, uh, that the Jews had to do for their walk was unnecessary. They were leaving Judaism. 
and Paul put uh, an actual Paul talks about that in 1339 uh, verse 38 be it known uh, unto you therefore men and brethren that through this man pr is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins and by him all that believe are justified from all things from which ye cannot be justified by the law of Moses so the law of Moses was never meant to save anybody these people get up this idea this faith works nonsense when all you're told is that the law can save you the law was to lead you to salvation the law, the law was to how they showed their faith by keeping the law they gave them a personal righteousness by keeping the ordinances, but it had nothing to do with salvation or keeping their salvation. Let's see what he says here. Peter used those Gentiles he ministered to as an example. Unless, I guess there is some mystery here in the scriptures we don't know about, where Paul raised his hand and said, I object, I object, I object. Let me go back here. Acts chapter 15, verse 7. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, you know how that's Let's verse 5. Because that's where the issue comes up. Pharisees who believe and said they want to bring him back to circumcision. Which was a Jewish ordinance, was a Jewish issue. They, they were trying to go back to Judaism and stay in Judaism. And then a while ago, God that was the problem at Romans 10. That was, that was the issue of John chapter 12. They weren't confessing Christ. They were afraid to get thrown out of synagogues. The choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. See that? Gentiles were receiving it from Peter before even Paul started. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Now let's read. Yeah, it. and we'll send his prayer. Verse 8 And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear the witness, giving them the what? Holy Ghost. So they got the Holy Ghost. They were in the body of Christ, even as he did unto us. And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by what? Oh, wow. Faith. But let's look at verse 11. But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved. So why do you skip verse 10? Why did he skip verse 10, people? Now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we are able to bear? Why did he uh, skip verse 10? Because it can't be faith works then. No one can keep the law for salvation. Go back. He skips verse 10. He skips verse 5 and 6. Right? That's where uh, the apostles come together. He skips verse 5. And then, but then he skips verse 10. Now, therefore, why tempt you, God, to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we are able to bear? And these guys think he can be saved by the law. <laughs> Crazy. See that? Is it? You bet. For the witness, giving them the what? The Holy Ghost. So they got the Holy Ghost. They were in the body of Christ, even as he did unto us. And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by what? Oh, wow. Hey, okay. But let's look at verse 11. Why look at verse 11? Why is he skipping verse 10? Why is he skipping verse 10, people? Why would you not, why did you not just read right through it? Because he's going to tell you that no one can get saved by the law. But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved. See that? Isn't that as Pauline gospel as you can get? Yeah. And notice he said right here, even as they, those Gentiles. Hypers would love to do some fancy wordplay about these Gentiles were under some Jewish uh, dispensation, under the Jewish Apostle Peter, yada, yada. No, Peter said right here, even as those Gentiles, it's this salvation that we're discussing and debating about with Paul right now. Was that issue about believing by faith? Yeah. That was the whole issue of Acts 15. Was it by works or was it by faith? Peter used those Gentiles he ministered to as an example. The issue is verse 10, not going back to Jewish ordinances. The issue is not going back to circumcision. The issue is that those things, you're no longer part of the Jewish, uh, the, the, uh, the Jewish system. That was what the issue of Christianity was being uh, be, uh, be about. Was it a return to Judaism? Or were these Gentiles going to go back into Judaism and have to be circumcised? 
and their walk was going to be part of the Jewish covenant, or was going to be—is it something new? Apart from that Jewish covenant, and that was the big debate going in Galatians. Unless I guess there is some mystery here in the scriptures we don't know about, where Paul raised his hand and said, "I object! I object! I object!" Our Apostle Paul. I'm the Apostle Paul. I guess Paul did that out of the blue, and we just don't know that. It's some history from the scriptures here. So you see right here that you've got to look at the scriptures. It is extremely important that from the plain wording of the scriptures. Yeah, what did you skip verse 10 for? The plain wording of the scriptures. He skipped verse 10. Now he's going against the grace preachers who want to start act, uh, the issue of act the uh, church in either in Acts chapter 8, mid, you know, or, or 28, or whatever, and they're all over the place. They want to start with Paul. And it's to be, it's to be, usually that's for the purpose of getting rid of the two ordinances, which is water baptism and the Lord's Supper, one or the other, or both. But the point is, you know, they're wrong, because the body was already formed, the uh, uh, people from Paul's uh, family were in the body, and he was persecuting the church in, uh, in Act, uh, uh, Acts chapter, chapter 9. But the point is, is that Notice what he has to sneak in, the idea that this was an issue of grace versus works, faith alone versus works plus faith, and he had to skip verse 10. Paul is talking about in 1339, Acts 1339, no one, the, the law can justify it. You can just get justified by the law. So the idea that people could, get, could keep, be kept safe because they kept some law was nonsense. It was a system of, of, of uh, a, a ritual system set up in order to glorify God through this covenant that he made with the Jews and to show the Jews were peculiar people. It was a walk, but it had nothing to do with getting saved. You showed your salvation by how well you did that, those ordinances, things like that. That was a way to show their faith. But that, they, that didn't give them salvation. That the church was long before the Apostle Paul it began at the cross of Christ. But why is it that you see differences, right? Because the hyper dispensationalists, they're right. There are there, there are clear distinctions and differences. There's no denying that. Their problem is this when they automatically assume there's a difference, they have to cut it off somewhere. No, that's not how it works. If you think transition from Jew to Gentile, it's going to Hebrews and James. That's a transition from Jews to Gentiles. The first two books there, James, Hebrews and James, are to save Jews in the first century. Or to get Jews saved in the first century. Click. It's going to click. They don't think like that. So I want to put this up show you how subtle these things are. This is a guy preaching a faith work system in the Old Testament. Denying grace entire right through the system. And teach, teach, teaching that uh, somehow this law could get you. And, and here Peter saying in verse 10. And, in, and, and, a law, and, and Paul says in, in Acts 13, 39. This is a yoke. We couldn't, couldn't keep it. And Paul himself said according to the law he was righteous. But the law was never set up to save anybody. The law was to point you to salvation. To show you couldn't keep the law because the law was so. Uh, rigid. Now, yes, we have, we have the Holy Spirit in us. The Holy Spirit keeps the law for us by giving us the fruits of the Spirit. In in the Millennium Kingdom, the Mosaic Law is, is removed. And they get the New Covenant with the laws written in their hearts. But that was, a, that was a ritual system set up in order to glorify God, to point to the Jew as a peculiar people, get the circumcision, and the idea that they would show their faith through these rituals and these ordinances. But it was never to be a, a, a way to get saved. You know, they you know they showed their faith by how well they did these ordinances and how consistent they were and how they followed them. They sh that showed their faith. That was their but that didn't that didn't give them salvation. They weren't, you know, dependent on their salvation for these these ordinances. They were dependent on their salvation for their by their faith, and these things show their faith. And the Gentile, what 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 Paul was pointing out, what Judaism was dead for a time. You know, 
the true Judaism even was dead. The fact it was held off prophetically was stopped and there's a new body being formed, Jew and Gentile together. And there's no longer a national issue, it became an individual issue. So I'm going to stop with this up. Again, most of what he says is absolutely correct about the hyper-dispensationalists and the new world and his actions too. Well, that's correct. But see, he, he put a point something. Why do you skip verse 10? There's a reason for that. There's <laughs> a very reason why that. Because you go back to the reason why this council was formed in the first place. Just the book of Galatians. These Jews wanted to stay in Judaism. They wanted to continue on. They couldn't understand the idea that these weren't just proselytes coming in. Gentile proselytes, which they always had. These, this is the end of Judaism. And uh, uh, as God's relationship with them. Their, their, uh, their sacrifices. That's why you go to Col also Colossians 2.16. Uh, those things will still continue on. This is the shadow of things to come in 2.17. They were doing that stuff. When that when Colossians was written. That stuff was still going on. It didn't end AD 70. The Sabbath keeping and the holy days and all that stuff. Paul went back to give a vow. And people look at that and they think, oh yeah, shadow thing, you know, things to come. Oh no, I can't, you know, those things. Well, when Colossians was written, that stuff was still in effect. That's why it's a shadow. Because they were doing things that were dead. They were basically, God was done with observing, you know, caring about that stuff anymore. But it was pointing to something. It would be pointing to a new dispensation uh, in, the, in the millennium when the Ezekiel's temple uh, is... Uh, is built. So stop here and put this up. Amen. Thank you.